All right, here's the last part of chapter two um, about proteins. And there's a, a few things to um, really get in your head and then other things to kind of have floating around in your head. It helps you understand material as you go forward when it comes to proteins. Proteins are very, very important in terms of how the body controls the various functions that happen. They're very, they're very much controlled with protein production um, and also um, uh, structure, etc. So we'll, we'll go through the laundry, laundry list of uh, protein functions. But they're the most abundant um, and probably, I guess, you know, I guess you could say most important. Um, this is your book talking because I don't know about most important. All of your elements are, all your organic molecules are important. Um, basic elements, carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, um, they are definitely the building blocks of your amino acids. And amino acids, uh, essential and non-essential, are the building blocks of proteins. So you kind of have the, the story going on there. Um, functions uh, support. You think of structural proteins, uh, certainly the, the, um, the uh, connective tissue, uh, we think of proteins. Uh, certainly there's a protein element uh, in bone, and we'll talk about that when we go into osseous tissue, but uh, bone is a type of connective tissue, and um, so structural proteins. And this is also, as we talk about the cell itself uh, in the uh, cytoskeleton, is going to be structural protein. So structural protein on a macro level and micro uh, level. Movement, um, you have fibers that are protein fibers that make up your muscle um, cells and then also protein type fibers that uh, create movement within the cell itself. They're um, actually microtubules um, and protein fibers that create movement so the organelles can move around in the cytoplasm. Transportation, uh, if the uh, body wants to move something around and uh, it'll usually put it in the bloodstream. If it wants it moved around in a very, very effective way and for a length of time, it will attach it to a protein. Um, also buffering, um, regulation of pH. Proteins are very good for buffering pH. Uh, metabolic regulation, otherwise known as enzymes. And we'll talk a little bit more about enzymes uh, right after this, this particular topic. Uh, hormones are proteins, and certainly hormones, think of your thyroid hormones, your um, sex hormones, your adrenal, adrenal, uh, adrenal hormones. These are your long-term control and coordination, and that's done through these uh, protein chemicals called hormones. And antibodies are proteins also. This is a long list of, of of items in the body that are protein based and you can think of each one creates a whole scenario in terms of what it does for you. Uh, this is uh, the design of proteins. One of the reasons why I like for you to do the, to see this, I don't want you to be bogged down in memorizing all of this data, is I continually when I talk about uh, proteins, I talk about the complex structure of proteins. So when I say that, I want you to kind of have this in your head, this complex type structure in your head. You have the primary structure, which are going to be amino acids that are linked together. Uh, they're linked together into what we consider uh, polypeptide chains. So uh, polypeptide chains. And um, those polypeptide chains can link together. And what you have are these uh, hydro hydrogen bonds that hydrogen wake makes a weak bond with itself. Even though it's bonding to a carbon, it's bonding to the oxygen, nitrogen, etc., it tends to be attracted to itself also. So when you have these uh, polypeptide chains getting longer and longer, uh, they tend to uh, form a secondary structure, which can either be an, a helix or can be a sheet. And so you have your helix on the left and the sheet on the right. And this is because of the, the, the slight attraction of these hydrogen bonds. And then uh, what can happen is the helix 
and the, the beta sheet, but mostly the helix can attract uh, another, um, what do I say, another uh, element uh, like this heme molecule. Uh, so you can have a heme unit attracted to the helix uh, to make what we know of as the protein that carries oxygen in blood. And then you can have the um, helixes twine around themselves to form a rope to form the, the uh, strong portion of the body which we call collagen. So protein structure, so you have primary, secondary, tertiary, um, quad, uh, quadrantary. And here's a kind of a blow up of all of it. It all comes from your book. Uh, polypeptide chains of amino acids. Uh, the protein is dictated by what amino acid um, sequence you have and also the sequence of the polypeptide chain. So you can see there's an infinite number of proteins that can be made by the body. Uh, these proteins are directed by your DNA. Then you have your secondary structure, these hydrogen bonds. It's kind of easier to see it bigger blown up there, how it's a weak bond. Uh, just an attraction. And then you have also your beta sheets, which are the bonds. Um, you have the tertiary structure, co coiling and folding of the polypeptide, uh, because the hydrogen bonding isn't necessarily just between two. Uh, the hydrogen bonding can actually um, be between multiple hydrogens. And then the uh, quaternary uh, structure that where several of the tertiary structures can get together uh, and uh, form a unit um, in that way. And then the uh, collagen. Again, these all come from your book uh, to look at. Uh, the big, big picture is that you have these steps to make the protein, you're also going to have the same steps to unmake the protein. So the same steps the body needs to make the protein is going to be the same thing it's going to have to go through for when you ingest protein from uh, animal protein and then your body needs to break it apart uh, to turn it back into these amino acid units so that they can be rebuilt back together into what you need. Enzymes, like I said, a uh, little bit of a talk about enzymes. They're catalysts. We, we, we um, mentioned this already. Um, understand they have certain characteristics. They're specific. Uh, they have a, a specificity, meaning this can be based on shape or this can be based on uh, size of the substrate of what the catalyst is going to work on. Um, they have saturation limits. If you only have 10 enzymes, there's only 10 um, substrates that can be acted on so that once those are all full, all the enzymes you have are full and working, that's what's considered a saturation limit. That means that that enzyme, uh, that particular activity the enzyme is doing is not going to be um, you're not going to be able to do any more of it. Uh, they're regulated by other chemicals, so other things can turn an enzyme on or off or uh, make an enzyme uh, be active, I guess you might say. They have activation sites, um, can make an enzyme be even produced. It's, it is a protein, and they are denatured or put out of commission by heat and pH. So they operate in a very, very narrow environment and a um, increase, increase or decrease of body heat or increase or decrease of uh, blood pH can, um, blood or body pH can, uh, can affect their, their uh, ability to work even to the point where they don't work at all. Nucleic acids um, are the building blocks of DNA. They work to store and process information on the molecular level. We think of nucleic acids as uh, found in uh, DNA. And DNA, uh, just to refresh, our inherited characteristics. Um, DNA directs protein synthesis, controls enzyme production, and controls metabolism. DNA resides within the nucleus. Um, its friend RNA can actually make a mirror of DNA and then leave the nucleus. 
Um, DNA is double-stranded, whereas RNA uh, is usually single-stranded, um, but it can bind to itself. But RNA uh, single-stranded and makes a mirror of DNA. And DNA is the double helix of complementary base pairs. Those complementary base pairs are always the same. Uh, adenine always pairs with thymine. Cytosine always pairs with guanine. Uh, with RNA, the difference is uh, uracil uh, replaces thymine. And that's the big difference between DNA and RNA in terms of the um, nucleic um, base pairs, the complementary base pairs. Uh, types of RNA are you have messenger, which we write as small m RNA transfer, small t RNA, and then ribosomal small r um, RNA. That's the the learning, the basic, um, when I say the, the basic information, we'll move on with this information uh, next chapter when we talk about the cell and mitosis, uh, but getting that information so that you have what nucleic acids are, building blocks of DNA. DNA is your, we think of that as uh, carrying your, G, um, your genetic code your inherited material. It's in the nucleus. It doesn't leave the nucleus, uh, but RNA, which can uh, mirror DNA, can leave the nucleus, and that's how DNA actually directs protein synthesis, which actually happens outside the nucleus in the cytoplasm uh, via its helper um, RNA. They um, can be used to store energy nucleotides, and this stored energy is in the form of ATP. Uh, so what we do is we take ADP, your body does, and phosphorylize. So phosphorylization takes place. Uh, you add a phosphorus group onto ADP, so D as in 2, diphosphate, and turn it into adenosine triphosphate, three, three um, phosphate groups. Very unstable compound, that instability is what gives it its ability to create energy for us. It's our big energy molecule. And there is an enzyme um, that's involved in this catalyzing of um, ATP to ADP, uh, and then it does actually take energy to um, put that phosphorus back onto a ADP to turn ATP. I know it's a, it's a mouthful. So it's a process. It's a process that takes place in the mitochondria. Uh, that, um, that process is called the Krebs cycle, the cystic, citric acid cycle. Um, it is, uh, part of it is the electron chain, uh, and it has to do with taking an electron off and using that uh, form of energy to put a phosphate um, element onto ADP and make a very highly charged compound we call ATP. It's our energy currency. And that's that. I will get started on uh, chapter 3.